Looks like outside work's done for now. Since it's raining outside, I figured that I would take a little bit of time and explain how to turn your camera from this screen auto to this M manual. We're going to explain manual settings. All right, so when we talk about manual exposure, manual settings, we're talking about three things. We're talking about ISO, aperture, and shutter speed. Those three things make up what they call the exposure triangle. We're going to talk about each one individually and briefly and show you some examples about how it happens, how it changes the photograph that you're about to make. All right, I moved up here because I'm more comfortable sitting in this chair than I am sitting on a chair in the studio. First thing we're going to talk about is aperture. The aperture is in your lens and it's basically, I don't know if you can see it in there, it's like, think of it as your pupil, your iris. It contracts, it's a ring in the lens that contracts and expands and obviously the wider open it is, the more light comes in, the more closed it is, the less light comes in. Uh, aperture does, in addition to letting light in, it also controls your depth of field. Depth of field is a whole other video that I'll do sometime in the future. Um, another thing is your shutter speed. These cameras nowadays, they have shutter speed from anywhere from one eight thousandth of a second all the way up to like 30 second long exposures. Think of when you have your shutter, um, these cameras have a sensor. There's a mirror right there, but behind this mirror, there's an electronic sensor. The sensor is what records the data of your image. The light comes in through the lens, hits the sensor when you open the shutter by clicking this button here. It exposes that sensor, records the image, transfers it to a file. Think of your sensor as a bucket. Think of the light coming in the lens as a as water coming from a hose and your shutter is the valve okay you want to fill that bucket up just enough to where you get your exposure right too much water the bucket fills up and overflows and you're overexposed and everything's white not enough water in the bucket the image is dark and underexposed so you know depending on your situation and how much light there is outside will depend on what your shutter speed is. Um, ISO, some people call it ISO. You'll probably hear me saying both. It really doesn't matter. It's basically your sensor's sensitivity to light. Most cameras start off with the native ISO of 100 and that's their base level and they go up. Some of them go all the way up to 42,000, 24,000, whatever. The problem with that is the higher you put your ISO up is the more noise introduces into your picture. Noise is this grainy, blotchy looking stuff that just makes your image look like crap. Um, I'm going to take some pictures. We're going to go over all this and show what it does. Um, yeah, that's it. All right, so here we have a little rudimentary scene set up with our little McDonald's Mandalorian guy set up. Um, he's on this darker thing. It's the only dark thing I could find because the light from the window coming in is blowing out this tabletop, making it look really um, bright and distracting. That's because that camera is on auto, and it's exactly why we're talking about not being on auto. So here's my settings. So right now I'm going to start with. F, let me see, one hundredth of a second, f2.8, ISO is 100. I'm going to half press my shutter button and it gives me a light meter. See that little pop up right there? That means I am about one stop underexposed. So things you can do to make that better, you can either lower your shutter speed and see how the little bar goes up and see... According to the camera, that's a properly exposed picture, okay? When you go that low, you're going to introduce camera shake. I like to be at least one two hundredth of a second. 
I'm coming at you from the other side because I want to use the light that's coming in for this. So right now I'm at 1 200th of a second f 2.8 ISO is 100. I'm going to take a shot and right now my meter is saying that I'm three stops underexposed. Okay, so I'll pull this up on the screen better on the computer. You'll see it full shot later. Jinx how dark that is. Okay, what we want to do is make it a little bit brighter so we can do one of two things. The easiest thing at this point right now is to bump up our ISO. So I'll bump my ISO up to 400, which is basically four times more sensitive now, or three times. So we'll do that. Okay, so that is your exposure at 400 ISO, and most cameras nowadays can handle 400 ISO. So say we want it to be even brighter, we'll take our ISO all the way up to 3200, which is a ridiculous number um, to be at, because it's going to introduce noise and it's probably going to blow out this picture. Okay. Yep. See how everything everything is bright. We'll uh, look that up. Okay. So it quit raining. So I figured I'd move to the back porch to give us something else to take a picture of. It's not bright and sunny. It's still cloudy. So it'll be good to change some exposure settings. Let me figure out something to take a picture of, and I'll be right back with you. All right, so we're gonna take pictures of this playhouse because it's right here. And it's gonna let me tell you a couple things about how to balance the sky and your subject. So we're gonna start with my settings inside were gonna to be totally different than what I had need outside. Right now we had the last shot we took upstairs. I was at F1.8, which your aperture is wide open, a lot of light coming in and shutter speed was 1 200th of a second ISO 100. So I hit my light meter, it says I'm way overexposed. We're just going to go ahead and take a picture of our playhouse. And it's going to look really bright and I'll put that up on the thing. So what easiest thing to do outside if I want to maintain the 1.8 aperture is I would increase my shutter speed and you're going to increase increase it a lot out here I'm at 1 12 50th of a second and it's given me a proper exposure so we'll go ahead and take a picture of that and that shows me what that is another thing you can also do is stop your aperture down i went back moved my shutter speed to one four hundredth of a second and we are at f5 which says i'm a stop underexposed um, so we will decrease the shutter speed to one two fiftieth now it says i'm pretty good i'm a third of a stop under so we'll go ahead and take a picture of that And do that so what happens if I'm at f5 and I go to one four thousandth of a second it says I'm way underexposed and it's nearly a black picture so we'll go to one two thousandth as it starts to rain again And it shows how dark it can get. So 
it's starting to sprinkle i don't want to get my stuff wet so back to the back porch all right i hope i explained this rather coherently uh, biggest take from it is to go out and practice play with your settings adjust your shutter speed adjust your aperture learn how your camera sees light every camera sees light a little bit different once you learn how yours sees light you can go on and you can be more creative with your settings and what to do so from that just go out shoot have fun i'll see you in the next video